those coalitions with community and labor to ensure that we have policies like the one that we're discussing today to address climate change and income inequality. We are living in times that we cannot ignore that climate change is an issue that is affecting our city, our state, our country, and the globe. We cannot sit down and say, climate justice can wait. The industry, the real estate industry should be taking action. And the action that should be taking, they should be actually reducing emissions. And this is what we're going to be doing with this policy. Many communities of color, particularly in the areas that there is so much pollution, are suffering today. We are seeing the deaths of people we saw and experienced during Hurricane Sandy. The time to act is now, and we need to ensure that both policies are introduced in this legislation. I'd like to introduce you to Council Member, Corby, uh, Council Member Constantinidis, who has been the champion on ensuring that we push forward policies that will be the model for our city, our state, and our country to ensure that we tackle climate change while we create good union jobs. Council Member Constantinidis. Thank you, Marissa, and thank you for standing strong. And I want to recognize my colleague, Brad Lander, who's here. Thank you, Brad. Yes. Thank you, brother. Mark Levine, thank you, brother. I know that our speaker, Corey Johnson, is, is hugely supportive. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. DC 37. Thank you. And my DC. Give me a second. My DC. I'll be back to the NYCC. This is what real leadership looks like, and I thank you, thank you for that. Because you are standing up. I see AIA too, thank you. Give them a round of applause. The architects who actually yeah. do this are saying it can be done. This is it. We have a moment to pass this legislation to make a real impact on climate change. 80,000 New Yorkers in the city of New York have asthma. 4,000 kids go to the emergency room every single year. We see more health related, heat related deaths every single year because the last five years have gotten hotter year after year after year. We've seen Hurricane Sandy and the impact on our city. We see weather events becoming stronger from climate change. We see a federal government who denies climate change, and yet in their own report that they tried to hide on Thanksgiving weekend, show that there will be over 100,000 climate refugees in the tri-state area. New York as we know it will cease to exist. Neighborhoods where we love we take care of, we live in, will disappear from the map. These are the stakes we're playing at. And yet, big real estate will say we should slow down. Op-ed no, no. 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 after op-ed the last couple of days have taken swings at this legislation and said, we've been rushed. We haven't moved fast enough. That's right. yeah. The action that we need to take will be the largest emissions reduction policy in the history of not just New York City, but any city. And we need to lead. The time is now. So today I want to thank each and every one of you for being courageous enough, enough to say, no, we're not going to wait. No, we're not going to back down. No, we're not going to just listen to big industry to tell us what they right. feel like right. doing. Yeah. We're going to stand up for right. real people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking to pass this bill and others under the great leadership, as I said before, of our speaker, Corey Johnson. Yeah. And when we get this done, 
This coalition is a lot to be proud of. So thank you, each and every one yes, of you. Yes, yes. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is right. It takes courage to take bold action, and we have a council a speaker. Corey Johnson, who is actually doing so. I'd like to introduce you to the speaker of the council, Corey Johnson. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for being here today. I want to thank the groups and the advocates, and I want to name a few of them. I want to thank New York Communities for Change. I want to thank the Working Families Party. I want to thank Align and Why, 350.org. We act for environmental justice. Yes. I want to thank all of the labor unions that are with us today. My friend Chum Francois yes. is yes. here. And, I, and, and the person I want to give the biggest thanks to is your champion, one of the most important environmental leaders, not just in the city of New York, but in the country because of what we're doing, Council Member Costa Concan. President, Executive Director of District Council 37, yeah. Henry Garino. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. blocking you. Um, so, so this this is uh, this is a day for celebration because we're doing the right thing, but it's also a very serious occasion because we're on the precipice of an environmental <laughs> catastrophe right. if we don't act. Yes. And so it is time to act. It is time to act now. Yes. Now is the time to act and to do the right thing. As you all know, the United Nations panel on climate change said that we have basically 12 years. And if we don't do something in 12 years, not just New York City, but the entire globe is in deep, deep trouble. And so, we, I said that actually last October, so we have 11 and a half years to act, which means we need to really uh, get going. The clock is ticking, and if we don't get going, there will be dire and detrimental effects for human beings, for the environment, for wildlife, for our economy, for all types of communities and countries and cities all around the world. And so the damage is actually incalculable. We can't even figure out how bad it will actually be, which is why I am so proud that the city council has taken this seriously and why we are on the precipice of passing Introduction 1253. So you all know this already, but when we pass this bill, this will be the most comprehensive, forward-thinking, progressive piece of Green New Deal legislation that any American city in the entire country has ever passed, and we're gonna do it. Yes. Yeah. And this bill will uh, cut greenhouse gas emissions overall in the entire city by 7%, but it's gonna have a 40% reduction on the buildings across New York City, which are some of our uh, biggest polluters. A lot of people don't realize this, but our city is uniquely vulnerable to climate change. We saw what happened during Hurricane Sandy. We saw the effects. We saw that our city was underwater in many places. And that could happen again this fall when hurricane season comes. And we have to act now. So uh, there has been a lot of conversation about wanting to change this bill in significant ways. Uh, the chair and the author of the bill has been very pragmatic but also not allowing this bill to be whittled away at. Right. Ensuring right. that it is still a strong bill. Yeah. And we're gonna to continue to be pragmatic uh, if people can come up with good reasons on why things should be changed. But we're not gonna make wholesale changes that weaken this bill in a way that would gut what we're trying to do here. That's right. So I look forward to working with all of you to lay the groundwork and the framework for New York City to be a national and international leader in passing Introduction 1253. And I really, really, really want to thank all of the activists, and all of the, the members of the different unions who, are here, who have done this work day in and day out. There is too much on the line. This is an existential threat to our city, to our country, to the world, to our humanity. And it's why we have to act now 
about two years ago, not many people were saying Green New Deal. And now we're hearing it all over the place. And now it's about more than just saying it, but actually doing something. Yeah. So that's what New York City, that's what the New York City Council is going to do. We're going to do the right thing. And I look forward to doing the right thing with all of you. Thank you all very much. Yeah. because we knew that this was an issue that we needed to tackle on. And we formed a coalition called the Climate Works for All Coalition. This coalition has been bringing together environmental justice organizations, environmentalists, labor unions, and community grassroots organizations. And you see all of them here today. This work can only happen when we work in coalitions and we work together. And I'd like to actually give right now an introduction to the executive director of DC37, ASME, who has been a leader on the climate movement, not only in the state, but in the country. Henry Barrito. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, and good afternoon. I am Henry Garrido. I'm the executive director of District Council 37, the largest municipal union of New York City. Yes. We represent over 125,000 workers, over 60,000 retirees and their families, which have over 300,000 people represented by our union. Most of our union members live in New York. They are citizens, they are taxpayers. Their pensions are right now investing into very poor situations. We let the fight first to divest from the fossil fuel industry. That's right. Yep. We let that fight because it made no uh, sense for us as trustees to continue to invest in the dying industry because it was leading to the detriment of our environment. We then took that investment and reinvested in the green renewable energy, more than $4 billion, because we're putting our money where our mouth is. We are fighting for this because it's the right thing to do. I think Einstein once said that the definition of insanity, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, yeah. expecting uh -huh. different right. results. That's right. We cannot expect anybody else to do this for us. New York City should be the leader, and I want to thank uh, Council Member Contaltinidis for the work that he has done because he has taken a lot of pressure from Rebney, from other unions, from, from industries that don't want to see this bill pass. We at DC 37 believe that leadership is doing what is right, yes. not doing what is popular. Right. So we're here to support and I will say this to you all, right? We, we saw the effects of Hurricane Sandy in our city. We cannot wait any longer. We need the time to act as now, so we're in full support, and we will make sure that all of our union's political support is behind this bill, 1253, and we want to ensure that that bill is passed as is, and not whittled out to be some empty gesture that the industry can benefit from so we are in full support. I want to thank the speaker for his leadership and his courage. I want to thank all the community advocates for what they've done. We are doing this. Si se puede. We're going to yes. get this si done. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We can do it. We can do it with a coalition as broad as this that has community members, labor, and council members who have been in the fight with us for a real long time. I just say five years. Five years in the fight. So I'd like to introduce you to a couple of council members, Council Member Ben Kellos and Council Member Bradley. Council right. Member Kellos. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Council Member Ben Kalos, I am here as co-chair of the Progressive Caucus with our founding co-chair Brad Lander, and we stand in support of intro 1253. Yeah! Yeah! We've been working on this 
for years, uh, like, like you said, five years to get a bill draft. And then once we got the bill draft, probably another year to get it to where it is today, where it is strong enough to make a difference. Uh, I want to thank Casa Constantinides, who I've known forever, who is a friend and champion for all of his hard work. Can we please give him a round of applause? Captain Planet! Yeah, that too. I love Captain Planet. I, lo I actually, I believe I am the only elected official who is a planeteer on the planet. Uh, but I want to thank a huge shout out. Sometimes we fight a little bit, but we got to a good place, especially with New York Communities for Change, for being very strong advocates for the best possible bill. I see folks from 350.org, uh, from DC 37. And our president, yes. Jean Francois the yeah. From Align New York, Working Families Party, the American Institute of Architects, People's Climate Mobilization, Environmental Justice Align, Sunrise Movement, NYC, and our singing friends at We Act for Environmental Justice. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Right. Now, as has been said, we're getting a little bit of pushback. We're getting pushback from one industry in particular, the real estate industry. Oh. And what I will say is, I don't take money from real estate. Our speaker doesn't take money from real estate. You don't own us, and your money is no good here. And I want to thank New York Communities for Change for having a pledge for that. We're electing citywide officials without real estate money, and that means they don't own us. It means we'll still listen, but they don't get whatever they want just because they thought they owned our city. Right. Now, when it comes down to it, buildings are responsible for two-thirds of the city's greenhouse gas emissions, but it's actually a relatively small share of the city's one million buildings that account for overwhelming 30% of the building emissions. Trump, we're looking at you. Yeah. And so we're hoping his bills will be his buildings, which are some of the worst polluters in the city, will be captured. Now, no one ever said saving the planet would be easy. No one ever said it would be inexpensive. But I've got a 14-month-old daughter. I'm borrowing this planet from her and everyone's children, and we need to leave it better than we found it. Thank you very much, and we will win. Thank you guys so much for this Thank fight. You. And I want to remind you just how hard this is because we need to remember how much further we have to go. Yeah, you know, Climate Works for All came together five years ago. But honestly, we started losing this battle, I think it's nine years ago. It's about <laughs> nine years ago now that then Mayor Bloomberg and then Speaker Chris Quinn were very close to making New York City the first city in the country to mandate retrofits of buildings. And at the last minute, the Real Estate Board in New York weakened that bill, and instead of mandatory retrofits, we got mandatory audits. <laughs> and it's the better part of a decade that we have been failing to bring the climate justice that we need to our city. Um, and I don't say that as like sour grapes, except that we've put 30% of the carbon into the atmosphere since we've known better. Since we've known better. And we did not, unfortunately, have the power to push back and beat the real estate industry and win mandatory retrofits then. Look, let's call it what it is. We wanted candidate Bill de Blasio to call for mandatory retrofits when he was running. We did not have the power to get it then. It has taken until now, and it is gonna take fighting every step of the way. Yeah. And that's right. why the yeah. biggest credit today is due to this coalition yes. that has right. not let go, that's that's right. has kept pushing. Yes. 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 We're gonna have to stick with it. But I wanna add, like we're, you know, a lot of the organizations have been shouted out, and. Uh, Henry and Sean, I want to say some props to a couple people that have been there for a long time. So from NYCC, both Jonathan Weston and Pizza Cora. Um, and it's really wonderful to be joined, I think for like the first time on a piece of New York City Council legislation by the new National Director of the Working Families Party, Maurice Mitchell. Woo! 
here. Look, I'll just add a couple of quick things. One, I don't know if you saw, but the Guardian newspaper just started putting the CO2 levels in the weather report because we got to figure out a way not to let this be something that is a long time off, but that is something we are called to act on every single day. And I'll tell you how that shows up for me. Uh, my daughter's a little older than Ben's, but my 16-year-old, when I get home every night, her first question is, Dad, what did you do today to protect the planet that you're supposed to be handing off to me? But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, today, I'm going to have a good answer. So, I want to ask you to indulge me in doing one thing, because I think the climate justice movement has learned some things about branding, because Green New Deal is great, and climate justice is great, and maybe the problem nine years ago was that our chant was not good enough. But, <laughs> as for nostalgia, I would like you to try it again with me, because then what we tried was mandatory retrofits. <laughs> so, 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 here we go. So, what do we want? Mandatory retrofits! When do we want them? Now! All right, thank you guys very much. <laughs> 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 There you go. <laughs> well, thank you, Brad. And you're right. Uh, there, this coalition actually has so many groups involved. And I'd like to introduce you to New York Communities for Change Executive Director Jonathan Weston. Let's go. Woo! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! Mike Check! We are about. We are about to pass. To pass. The boldest, the boldest municipal, municipal climate legislation, climate legislation in, this country. in this country. We are, we are in, a in a climate crisis. Climate crisis. We are, we are in, a in a climate crisis. Climate crisis. We need, we need a Green New Deal. A Green New so much. Uh, again, I'm Maurice Mitchell. I'm the national director, the new national director of the Working Families Woo! Party. Uh, and I'm so honored to be here. This is historic. We're making history today, right? And many people said before me that, you know, we're up against the wall, right? This climate calamity will be measured not in decades, but in years, right? And if you'll indulge me, this issue is really, really close to my heart. So in 2012, I became a Hurricane Sandy refugee. I saw my family's possessions washed away. I saw my family, my aging parents, become refugees too because of Hurricane Sandy. So this climate crisis is actually happening right now to many of us. Just last year, my mother's 
home country of Trinidad and Tobago experienced the most intense flooding in years. Communities were separated from the island. So this crisis speaks to my heart and my soul. This, and oftentimes, and we heard it in Congress, you know, especially Republicans that are on the take from the fossil industry, try to talk about this like this is some sort of niche issue, that issues of the ecology and climate aren't issues that affect working people, people of color, poor people every single day. So I want to hear everybody say, climate justice is racial justice. Mm. Climate justice is racial justice. Climate justice is racial justice. Climate justice is racial justice. And it's so appropriate that we have our brothers and sisters in labor here. So we can also say, Climate justice is economic justice. Climate justice is economic justice. Once again, climate justice is economic justice. Climate justice is economic justice. But as we know, organized capital, real estate lobby, the fossil fuel lobby, and others are trying to prevent us from saving our lives, for protecting the planet for our children, right? Now, when no action and no leadership will be moved in Washington or in Albany, we have to take decisive action on the grassroots. And we have a gem of a city council with true progressive leaders that are willing to align with labor, with independent grassroots organizations, and usher in legislation like Introduction 12. 53, which will be a landmark, historic, national gem of what's possible when we all align. Look around. I see people of every race. I see people in labor. I see people in government. I see people uh, in the grassroots coming together because time is of the essence. So I feel, I feel a sense of clarity, a moral clarity, and I'm happy today because I know we're going to win. Thank you. Voy a decir un poco de palabras en español para las personas que están aquí que solamente hablan español. Eh, estamos aquí hoy para asegurarnos que esta ley pase, eh, la ley de 1253. Vamos a asegurar que esto pase porque es una de las, de las, las uh, leyes más historiales que podemos tener para enfrentar los cambios climáticos en nuestro país y en el, en el mundo. Vamos a hacer un modelo para el mundo. Es muy importante eh, decir que estamos en una coalición de diferentes organizaciones, de, de personas que son de las uniones y también personas que son de las 